are doing well. Well, Goldman Sachs shares jumping today, even though the company's second quarter earnings slid 82% from last year. Goldman pointing to its record-setting $550 million SEC fine that it had to pay for the hit that it took to its bottom line. Now, that fine, of course, being announced just hours after the financial reform bill passed the Senate. And now, Representative Daryl Issa wants to know if politics were what drove that announcement, and he joins us now. Welcome, Representative. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you, Liz. Uh, let, let us do this somewhat in reverse. Does it really matter? I mean, we're after the fact at this point. Uh, Apple, pay, uh, Apple, G Goldman Sachs paid the fine, and here we are trying to move forward on this. So, so what is the the crucial aspect that you're pointing out here that you feel is certainly newsworthy and important to at least look at? Well, so much of what's in financial reform is what's not in financial reform. Freddie and Fannie, uh, you know, if you, that fine makes you believe, oh, yes, it's all about Goldman Sachs. Well, there's plenty of blame to pass around. But as you know, the financial reform bill did not talk about the $6 trillion that was locked up in, in toxic assets sitting at Freddie and Fannie. It didn't deal with the fact that there was a culture of it's okay. As a matter of fact, it's encouraged to loan on bad loans as long as you can roll them over and get rid of them. So are there, is there fault? Absolutely. Does Goldman deserve some of it? Of course. At the same time, financial reform is now a book trying to be closed just at a time when they should be opening more and more investigations about what really were the other causes and how we prevent it in the future, particularly how do we untangle the American people and their tax dollars from the home loan business. All right. Well, clearly you want to shift topics a little bit to something that you're, I know you're excited about, which is Fannie and Freddie. Well, thank you, And the you, fact David. that you have, been, you have been going through records that you subpoenaed uh, for a long time now, for weeks, and you found one thing in particular, that is the number of people that got sweetheart loans from Countrywide that worked for Fannie and Freddie. Talk about that. Well, I think what made them sweethearts was what they were doing for Countrywide. Countrywide entered into exclusive agreements that allowed them to off just countless toxic loans, loans that they knew were bad, everyone knew were bad, onto Freddie and Fannie, and particularly Fannie. Uh, and, and at the heart of this was subsidized loans, loans to executives that were done below cost and done for a reason. And as we get into these emails, we're seeing a pattern, which was these loans were not simply good loans. They were too good loans. Okay, so what is the next logical step here? Because there has been such a gigantic complaint about the fact that Fannie and Freddie have been put to the side here and not focused upon. So is there a push that you can perhaps make where we can hold Fannie and Freddie accountable and stop putting everything on the taxpayer's shoulders? Well, Liz, there's two problems. There's the real reform of Freddie and Fannie and getting them out of being uh, too big to fail, which they are today. Uh, at the same time, we cannot close uh, the book without criminal investigations and likely indictments against countrywide officials and people who knowingly took subsidized, below-cost loans and in return produced, if you will, a deal for Countrywide that uh, even though Countrywide at the end did badly, we did much worse on the loans we took from Countrywide. Those loans were done based on deals that in no small part included the 173 or so subsidized loans that we found so far to Freddie and Fannie. Congressman. It's worse than, than the Freddie and, Fre and Fannie employees, though. We have Chris Dodd, who got one of these VIP sweetheart loans. He's a senator in the United States Senate who actually wrote a housing bill, a $300 billion housing bill, uh, that cost taxpayers and offloaded a lot of the worst countrywide loans to the taxpayer. Uh, is that investigation at an end? I'm afraid, David, it is. The Senate has decided, unless they change their mind and they don't have much time left, that the Senate ethics uh, rules were not violated. Now, any common sense ethics rule seems to have been violated, but you know, this is the same Senate, and I'm not a member, so maybe I shouldn't talk, uh, that saw, thought that Torricelli getting a golden uh, Rolex watch somehow didn't violate the $50 rule. So that's for those people on that side of the dome to decide. I certainly don't agree with that decision, but I'm trying to move on into other parts of the executive branch, other places where behavior is much more the letter of the law. It includes 
uh, rules at Freddie and Fannie, but I think we're going to find all parts of government that could help uh, Angelo Mazzillo and his team helped them, and they helped them after they got these kinds of subsidized loans below cost. Okay. Representative Daryl Issa, Republican of California, we thank you so much for coming to talk about this. Thank you.